now it's time to work back on our Taylor again, our little Taylor, right? Nice little guitar. I've got to uh, clean these frets up, these uh, remainder, that glue that's left behind. I can't leave that on that green stuff. You can see right here, and it's raised up, and I got a couple little nicks started. That's pretty common with these guitars that get older. And those get repaired as you go along. Anyway, what I do is I take a nice flat file and very gently flatten those back to flat. And when we're working with something this, you know, delicate, you don't want to get real aggressive with it. You end up cutting a trough. You just want to remove the uh, excess glue and lower the area of the fret is what you want to do. And here's my little group of files I'll use. And I'll pick the one of the best width, which is probably this one right here. Nice little file. And get in there and start cleaning up that area that uh, has been raised by the fret removal. I can show you that to it. That looks like a pretty good zoom in. <laughs> Where can I start so you can see it? No, you can't see that. You can see this. All right, so I just take my file, just flat as can be, and just gently rub right over that same spot where that glue is, and just remove it. And I follow the exact course or radius of the guitar as well. So that's not an issue. And I've got some little tiny chips in there. i got to clean those up later on. I'll show you how that's done. But in the meantime, now I've got a cleaned out area that I've got to do another 22 times. <laughs> to get those nice and level and get that stuff right there, if you can see where I'm pointing, or that right there where I'm pointing to, that green looking stuff, that's that old glue. All right, well, I found my little gnarly brush, a little brush of shame. It's a brass brush. <laughs> so that's 10 times fast. And it cleans up your file very nicely. It doesn't damage it much because it's less abrasive than the file is. But you've got to get that old material out of there, and it's just packed in there right now. So we're going to start by cleaning this last cut. You know, that green crud off there and very gently follow the radius of this guitar. You just want to get the green crud off and the fret area flat is what we want. And when that's done, you'll see it's gone like this. Nice? Yes, works very nicely. Here we go. Let's get to the rest of them. Let's see. Can you see the next one? No, of course you can't. Now nah, you can. Next one next. Let's just file that area down. Clean that nice up. said you're just cleaning it you're not removing anything else like the extra dirt that's on this guitar's fingerboard I think I'll have to do that soon too it's got like a caked on finished it so we're gonna get back to it and a guy bring his a uh, little telecaster in here oh, sorry stratocaster in here and what's bad about this one is that green stuff it's kind of a mold that's on here. I uh, really need to break it down, clean it up, get rid of it. I've never seen that before. And I hope it's not a mold. I hope I'm wrong. But it sure looks like it because there's a bunch of buildup of goo on this fretboard that I really need to address here. 
but not until I get those frets in. I'll do a cleanup on the board after I get the frets in because I don't want that uh, material to go inside these holes once I clean these things out, clean them up. Like I said, I'm trying to get these to go flat so I can work with them. And I guess that green stuff at least gave me an eyeball of what to uh, knock down. Alright, well, last thing that needs to be done is to check the uh, thread holes, make sure they're clean of any glue. Get in there and kind of clean them out with these type of files and saws. Don't blow any excess junk out of there. <laughs> excess, sorry excess, excess. Make sure they're nice and clean. And some chips are coming out of this thing. This thing is really chippy. But the only thing different when this guitar and the last one you saw me refret. See all that dirt coming off down there. Anyway, the only thing different is uh, the uh, tines don't come all the way to the outside edge of this guitar like they did on the Yamaha. But yes, this thing's got some dirt in it. Take a look. Uh, yeah, yeah. I get that stuff out of there. It's old glue. We don't want to glue new glue to old glue. stuff so let's the edge a little tiny chip as usual this thing really chippy but like I said we make up a nice strong bunch of paste and fill these in once we have it threaded so there's no more issues and it looks right plays right look at all this dirt coming out of here Green, green glue and green dirt. Wow, those are really dirty. All right, well, it's pretty much prepped. It's time to uh, get the frets and sails out. Get the measurements going, get the fret clip nippers out. And what I end up doing is I'll cut the tines off of this. I'll cut the tines off this and the top part of the fret will be exposed and go over the edge because the tines do not go all the way through on this guitar. That's why it's uh, easier and nicer to play than have that, uh, what you call it, uh, sharp fret ends. Well we got it all cleaned up, got all that goo out of there, that old glue, and up with a couple extra chips, but that's what happens on old fret boards. And this one I kept oiled up for a long time before I got onto this. See what I could do to uh, help stop you know any more chips than I could happen. I can imagine why I'd gone I could imagine what it's been like if I didn't oil this board up as much as I did and for as long as I did. This thing would be nothing but a bunch of chips. 
because it was left to dry out. And that's just bad for a guitar. Guys, you've got to oil your guitars up. You've got to oil those fretboards up with linseed oil. Because you're really asking for it if you don't. I mean, you're asking for a lot of bad news. Well, this is the uh, Taylor I'm doing a refret on since it's so worn down. And I'm waiting for all the equipment to get here to work on this particular guitar. Uh, most guitars I work with, the uh, fret tang goes out the edge and the, is past the binding here. The Taylor is not. The tang is held with inside the uh, binding. You don't see it, right? So, normally I use a set of clippers like this. And there's no problem using them. They're very sharp, they're very steady, and they're very strong. I mean, very strong. The only problem is, uh, these are not meant to do stainless steel. These are meant to do nickel and mild steel, not stainless. And the Taylor fret is nickel and stainless, and it is a booger to cut. I mean, I've bent more of these frets and I've cut them with this tool. And this thing will cut through nickel and mild steel like butter, just boop, and it's done. So, I looked all online to try to find something that will help me out rather than a saw and a file. And I found what's called the uh, fret tang nibbler or nipper, right? And the way it works is, you're, I don't know if you can see this or not guys, the lighting's not perfect, but the uh, fret goes on inside here, or beside here, right on the edge, with the tang pointing up and you adjust it by uh, uh, simply holding it in the right spot and clipping it. Uh, I can't do this on camera real well. <laughs> it's just one of those things you have to uh, guide it through. But let's see, it says it cuts off 90% of the uh, fret tang itself. 90% you file the rest. I mean, you know, I don't mind doing, you know, just a quick file up job on, you know, 10%. That's no big deal as long as it cuts it. Okay, so it says hold it steady in a quick motion, all right? I'll be darn, look at this guys, perfect. <laughs> Buddies, I have found the perfect fret in 90%, look at this, look at this. And a file will cut down the rest of that. Now, that actually is not even nice, it's like 2% left on there. This little jewel, if it continues to work real well, I'm really gonna recommend to everybody I know that does this type of work. This is excellent work, guys. I mean, this really did the job. <laughs> I am shocked. Oh, just, just like butter, look at that. Just snapped it right off. And I can put that with my file and, and take down the edge of it, you know, and, and shave it. Oh, yes. This is a lifesaver because otherwise it's cutting and filing on these things to take care of a tailor. Oh man, oh man, oh man. I'm glad I ordered this. Alright, well trying to put that first fret in, uh, I realized that this uh, fret is just not, this uh, fret line is just not deep enough guys. It's just right on the edge of deep enough and it's got It's got to be lowered some to accept the fret. The fret's going in there perfectly, right? So, <clears throat> what I've got to do is take my little deepening saw, right, at 15,000. So I don't want to widen this. I just want to clean it out some and get the, it ready to accept this fret. And of course, it's an older guitar, and it's going to chip, and it's going to do its thing. You know, these little uh, triangle chips that are in it. And that can't be helped. Those came out uh, when I removed the old frets. And they had to, get, they had to come out. They can't stay in. There was not enough fret left to work. It just wasn't enough there to uh, save them. It's very expensive to do this. 
And now we got it at depth. One spot. Okay. And there it is. Now we'll take the nipper after we glue this and we'll nip it off. Sorry guys, you can barely see that. Hold on. We'll take the nipper, we'll nip it off once it's glued up and set and it's not gonna go anywhere. And then we'll take our shaving block that you've seen before and we'll run it down the sides like this, back and forth, right? Let's see if I can find that. There it is real quick. Let me show you what we use to uh, put that 30 degree angle on the end of these frets. Once I've cut the, the uh, top of the fret off uh, near the uh, uh, fretboard itself, uh, straight up and down, I take this little tool here, sorry, here we go. I take this tool and put a uh, uh, 30 degree angle on the uh, end of the fret itself. Very simple, just up and down and 10 minutes later you got perfectly, you know, angled frets in so nothing, you know, to have to file personally on that kind of thing. But it still takes a, a hand tool, hand uh, file, to uh, uh, polish up and get that sharpness off the tops of the frets. You have to still shape them. Again, that's why this job is so time consuming and uh, expensive. So, if anybody's offering you a, a new fret job at half price, jump on it. I'm offering half price on recrowns and fret jobs. I've got quite a few lined up to do and show you guys. Alrighty, so let's get on with this and start uh, tanging these frets and get that out of the way. Get them measured up. And the best thing to do on this circumstance is just to take them and uh, run them across so I get to these lower frets, or I'm sorry, these higher ones, higher up on the board that need to be cut length. For these ones on the bottom, uh, basically what I'll do is take my fret uh, cutters and uh, nippers. I'll come in here and nip it straight across, uh, not too close to the fretboard, so I can take my shaver and shape that once it's done. Then I take my hand file, my specialized hand file, and I uh, take the sharpness off the fret. So again, uh, 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 I started to use my nipper like I used to do. Take my new tang nibbler here. <laughs> okay, take my tang nibbler, get it lined up. I want to take a lot off these. Wow, that just took it all off. That's not even 90%, that's all of it. This little tool I'm going to like a lot using. If, it stays, if it's still working at the end of the day, I'm going to be real happy with this. I guess the word on this thing is take off a little bit of time to get all you want off the fret so you don't end up with any sharpness on it. That's doing a great job guys taking the tangs off this fret. A little tiny bit left on here but uh, that'll go away. That's gone. That's all gone. So it's going to take some time and practice working with this to uh, get used to using it. Oh yeah, let's do this real quick. <clears throat> let's do a depth check. And this one's nowhere near deep enough. All right, okay. I thought I'd clean these out and got them deep enough, but uh, it looks like I haven't, and the weather has changed. And believe it or not, guys, I'm not taking off a lot of uh, fretboard with this. Just look, see how tiny that shaving is? Just that much on the top of this. So these saws from Stumac do a great job. Because I don't want real deep cuts in this. I want, I want it shaved. I want, I want tops of the inside that shaved which is what these saws do. All right. 
I need to change my lighting up so I can see and get these in properly. Well, that's got it. So you got the depth right on this. Yeah, that's about right. It's like it had a wider fret in it. I can just see from the actual cut in the board itself that it's wider than the, all the others. So I need to glue this thing up. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that off for now. Check the next one for depth. All right, guys, you'll see uh, all the uh, breasts have been trimmed and cut and <laughs> ready to go. Uh, now, my uh, opinion on this tool is it's really one really nice tool. Uh, I'm not sure how long it will last. It is meant to cut in uh, one direction. Uh, you can see by the, uh, where the jaws work here. You can see it very well, that slant to it. And uh, when they cut, brother, it cuts. Uh, I'm not sure how to keep it in shape. I guess just uh, keep it clean with some oil and stuff. But anyway, uh, the, the uh, method to use, don't try to take off too much of the tang. Uh, leave a little uh, gap in there. You'll see what I talk about when you put the uh, fret inside of it. And work your way down the uh, fret if you have to have, you know, remove more of the tang. Now, it says on the package it removes 90%. But I'm willing to bet that's 90%. 5% of the uh, fret tank has been removed on all my frets by carefully doing it and which means a lot less work on the uh, you know finish and polish up of these frets to put them into the guitar Okie dokie. so next step is to uh, get the files out and uh, flatten out this uh, last 5% of the uh, fret tank get it out of there so they'll cut nicely with my uh, brand new uh, fret nippers. <laughs> and I've already tested these. These work really nicely. Same company provides them. Uh, this Guitar Tech, you know, off of uh, uh, hmm, Amazon. <laughs> but uh, these are almost good enough to use for uh, fret pullers if the, the head was a little flatter. Anyway. Nice set of tools, uh, $45 total plus shipping and tax, all that kind of good stuff. About 50 bucks for these, this uh, fret uh, nipper and the tang remover. Not bad investment. Uh, I hope they last a long time. The uh, tang remover looks like it's going to last a while. It's very well made, as well as the uh, nippers are very, very well made. So any questions about that, give me a holler. Uh, we want to happy to explain what we're doing how they work as well as what we've done so far with the uh, guitar and uh, next step is like I said to uh, uh, carefully slowly remove these mark them where they belong and uh, file them so that uh, the bottom of that 5% is gone from that uh, fret tank so hang in there guys so as you can see we're going along nicely here everything's going along smooth uh, I got one fret that's a little bit stubborn this uh, first fret but uh, the uh, tang nipper that I bought you did, which I've done on these Right, because it leaves kind of a jagged spot on the uh, where the cut is, but it's not 10%, it's only like 5%, so it doesn't take you that much filing to do uh, to get it down. But you got to do it on every single one of these, just like this, and I'll show you uh, the results. It's not that hard, just you know, hand file and you know, go at it. Of course, you have to have a pretty good file to do this with, <laughs> which I've got right here. We want that to be as smooth near the edge as we can and the edge I'm talking about the edge near the uh, where the tang begins again that's a little tiny percent that's going to hang over the top of the guitar 
and be that 30 percent or 30 uh, degree turn so it takes about like that on each every single one of these about oh, another five ten minutes per fret <laughs> which is an hour and a half worth of work of filing get these things back where they belong but once you've done them, man, they're beautiful. I mean, these are the stainless steel types. These are nickel stainless steel, and they are just wonderful frets. Just a lot of work to do. Yes, they are. And they do ruin tools like left and right, especially on uh, files. They can really eat up a file. <laughs> I mean, fast. But uh, we're going along smoothly here. We're giving these enough room to uh, be where they belong. And I had them on the fret press. I want to make sure this thing's 100% before it leaves my shop and I don't want any uh, frets that may go wonky on me and I take a little bit of you know, wiggle on them to chip up any more wood than I have to. I still have a lot of uh, tiny repairs to do on this guitar before it goes out on the chips that it created when I pulled them out. So that's what we're looking at right now. Uh, finishing this up okay guys as you can see we're going along smoothly here everything's running the form uh, <clears throat> I just finished grinding this one down and what you're looking at uh, is a little bit like 5% left of the uh, tang itself it takes a file like this just to get in there and just knock that down real quick of course it's not real quick it takes a while because <laughs> this is nickel stainless what you end up doing it's falling this away for that uh, 30 degree bend on the outside of the fret. And this is the overhang because these frets don't show through the tang on the uh, on the tailors. And I try to go back and cut these again with a fret nipper, the Tyler Tang nipper, but I ended up putting a tiny little crimp in them. Well, I don't want to do that anymore. Of course, I'm going to cut that away anyway. <laughs> it's going to be on the guitar. But I wanted to make as little work as I had to on these things, save some time, but this doesn't look like it's going to happen. Uh, it's just going to be, you know, take time to do each and every single fret down to its bare minimum like this. That took, what, four or five minutes? So four or five minutes times, you know, 22 frets, 20 frets, you're looking at an hour, hour and a half, something like that, just to file these things down. And again, that's why you're looking at so much expense when you do a refret job. One thing I did want to show you is my fret nipper, my new one for guitar uh, company, right there on uh, Amazon and eBay too, I believe. This little thing will cut through common frets like crazy. I mean, even cut the tang, look at that. And not bend the uh, spread itself, just just like butter. <laughs> this thing, hear it? This thing is amazing. This is a nice little tool, guys. And if I have just you know non-stainless, I can cut them all day long with this thing. Look at that, 100% off. Wow, that is nice. These are nice. These are nice. And cutting through it, just same thing. The whole whole fret. Take a look. This is the whole fret. Watch. Just point done nice and flat <laughs> these are good tools but <laughs> try to use on a stainless and just bends the crap out of them before I tried that and that's not a fun experience when you have expensive frets and you're just bending them now here's a here's a stainless one okay here's my little fret Julie's right I don't want to dull these but uh, trying to nip through these things uh-uh look at that just put a crease in it did not cut it these are just not strong enough for stainless you've got to have a, a tang cutter wow I just put a dent in it <laughs> I guess I took a tiny well let's try that let's try that guys it's like a tiny little piece of this fret it's a little cut through it nope just bent it <laughs> oh man you see that is bend it, it go in any way through any way through this this darn little fret and that's what it is with stainless steel frets they ruin tools I mean I'll go through uh, what's called on a guitar like this I'll go through a file a complete file uh, 
you know, hand file with these, uh, just recrowning them. And there's forty dollars. And that's again why they cost so much. You got, you got to buy stainless steel tools to work with stainless steel. And brother, those aren't cheap. The uh, file I've got to work with stainless steel. That thing is uh, no less than uh, ninety bucks. Okay, that is not cheap. But it's the only thing we'll cut this stuff, and the only thing we'll grind it are diamond files. And other than that, you just end up bending the crap out, and nothing happens. No good. Guys, one thing I wanted to mention uh, for safety's sake is that you don't want to uh, be filing on this stainless steel and then uh, put your fingers to your eyes like your eye itches and you have all this little tiny bits of stainless steel dust on there right now the only way I've heard to be able to take it out of your eye is with a magnet or some such sort you know a lot of wash and <laughs> basically almost an operation I heard thank goodness you know it's not happened to me but I've heard it happening so when you're doing this type of work make sure to clean your hands on occasion wash them very well keep your fingers out of your eyes and your nose <laughs> that's tough for me because I love to just you know get there and dig <laughs> okay oh, let's get gross get some fart jokes some caca poo poo jokes anyway uh, just be careful with what you're doing because this stuff can be dangerous to your eyesight. You don't want to damage your eyesight trying to fix a guitar and then you can't fix them anymore. You want to square these off right where that little tang is, right? So just a tiny bit hangs over the edge and that's really what you want. You don't care about the rest of it. You just want that one little spot there to fit properly and center up like this. And have that little extra piece hanging over. Okay, so that's all set, and I've warned you about, uh, you know, even your clothing, guys. Uh, before I put my clothes into a wash, I take a uh, very sticky tape, wrap it around my hand backwards, and brush my clothing off, make sure I get any, any you know, extra metal shavings I can get off, because blowing it won't do any good. Uh, not with the shop air, right? You get a chance to blow it in your face and your eyes again. But... Uh, just be really cautious about any type of stainless steel shavings uh, on acoustics, right? And even on uh, uh, electrics, be careful around the uh, uh, pickups themselves because those pickups are magnets and they'll pick up any bit of uh, shavings and put them right there on that pickup and make a mess of it. So, just a word of warning. Uh, hang in there, guys, while we finish this up. Well, we're still at it, guys. This is taking a hell of a long time to get these little, you know, 5% of this uh, tang off these uh, stainless steel frets. Man, this is a job. So, let you know we're still working on it. It takes a long time. We can't accept them if it looks like this. You can see that or not. Got to be the raw top of the fret or the bottom side of the fret only showing. So, hang in there, guys. Well, guys, here's a little trouble I ran into on this uh, Taylor refret. Uh, originally, I had started to put these down and dry fit them, and I ran into a little problem. It was like 5.30 in the evening. I was getting tired. been at this since 8 o'clock in the morning, working on this guitar and a few other ones. <laughs> had a bone nut uh, that was like three-quarters of the way finished, split and crack, making it totally useless. And to top it off, uh, I was just plain tired. So, it was uh, going to get cool at night, I knew that. I went off and left my little heater on, my new little blast furnace. And uh, I come back out the next morning, and guess what? My little blast furnace had uh, tripped and gone dead, and it, was, and it was freezing cold inside the shop. So like, oh boy. <laughs> So I walked over to the tether and I took a close look at it and I thought, uh-oh. What's going on with this thing? And I took a closer look and I saw that a lot of the frets I'd hammered down had sprung. This came right out. Sorry guys, this battery thing. 
Anyway, what, what happened was the uh, temperature dropped 40 degrees and uh, I had these spring on me because I hadn't glued them down. I just, ham I just pressed them and hammered them in and about a dozen of them just popped right out uh, with the big temperature change on them which I, I kind of half-assed expected, but that's why I went off and left the heater going, okay? About yay far away from my workshop, or I'm sorry, my workbench. And it was freezing cold when I came outside in the shop, and it's like, oh my God. So I had the owner come by and take a look, explain to him what was going on, and why his, uh, you know, favorite guitar <laughs> is uh, sitting here that needs some different frets uh, set up on. I'll have to replace, I think, two or three of them. But that's no big deal. Big deal is that uh, I don't want to have to pull these out they are halfway in. The ones that came out and just come out by themselves, uh, they were loose fits to begin with, all right? I already knew about those. And this is what I do to help uh, with the pressure on these things, put them back in place. As long as, as, long as all this is pointing down, as long as all these are actually down inside the fret itself, none of the tank area is showing, I can't get anything underneath them, they're fine when I glue them down again, okay? So, what we got here, obviously, are the frets that have, uh, you know, expanded on me and popped out of here, but I've got a bunch that remain and are really well down into the, you know, fretboard itself, but I can't except even the, the, the hint of uh, that tang showing on these uh, frets. They gotta be down. And I hate to do this, but it looks like I have to lift a few of them out that are still in, which always, cre always creates uh, chips, which uh, I've already got chip, uh, chip dust is what I call it, coming from uh, Stumac to fill these chips in with. But man, oh man, is that frustrating. And just because this little darn thing here blew the, uh, what you call it, blew the uh, brand new switch box I got for it. And I think what was going on was, uh, unbeknownst to me, I was charging my phone, I was charging my camera, and went off to lift my amp on, which was just too much for it. It was just uh, too much being sucked through it. Couldn't take the load, so that's just uh, old dandy. And uh, I explained that all to him, he's very, you know, understanding. And what I got to do again, like I said, is get in here and get these frets down and uh, go from there. So hang in there, guys. Well, here we are with the Taylor again after a lot of problems with this guitar. Uh, we had uh, dry fits spring out. We had glue fits uh, spring out on this due to weather, uh, well, sudden weather changes. And finally, we had two days of no humidity and uh, nice uh, warmish weather and look finally got it done now here's one I want to point to that was a nightmare trying to keep it down so I had to take a, a special vise and uh, put that in place but they're all down finally and what's left to do is the uh, dress up which is a lot of work alright first things first I gotta trim these edges and get that done make sure they don't pop up when I trim them once that done I'll go through there with a special tool that I've got just for this job. And what it is, is a special exacto uh, blade with a special tip on it. And what it does, it puts a singular drop of glue underneath the uh, tang itself. Now, when doing this job, when I'm doing these cuts, I want to keep this as close as I can as a pole magnet, all right, on a pole. And it helps me pick up any uh, parts, any uh, tang parts that have uh, popped off and gotten loose on the uh, carpeting. Except those that have dug into the carpeting. Uh, but I don't want any of these parts to come off and get in my shoes and be tracked into my house to where I can uh, step on them later because they really do hurt. Right? And there's not, some of them just will pop loose no matter what I do and, and you get to the ground, but. In the meantime, I gotta get this camera set up so you can see what I'm doing and also not be in my way so I can do the job right. And of course, it's more important that I do the job right than you see this, but I still want you to see it. All right, I'm coming in, 
straight across, even with the with the binding. I don't want to go over the binding because that's what the uh, other tool is for is to uh, shave it off at 35 degrees. And here's what I get left with. You can see it's so tiny, but trying to go back and shave that will take forever with my grinder. And it takes forever to get it off there. But that's what's left. And that's got to go into the trash can. Otherwise, uh, my feet and everybody else's feet are in for a nightmare. Like I said, even you see that? Even with the binding, not over the binding, even with it. Get that off there. Clean that up. And finish that. Uh, something's going to stick to that jaw. Okay. Next one. And some of these. There's just not that much. I didn't uh, leave that much extra on them. So I'm just kind of shaving them as I go. Whoopsie. <laughs> and some have a lot left on them. Okay. Especially over the body itself. I was trying to be as careful as I could on that. This one should have a nice cut on it. Again, I get these up and get these into the trash can. I don't like uh, waiting on these things to throw them away. I'll get rid of them as quick as I can. And you, what you don't want to do is to put any pressure while you're doing this on the body of the guitar. You know, you keep that pressure just on the uh, tool itself and don't push down. Don't push downwards. It's all across. If you know what I'm saying here, the pressure to cut these. And so far, I don't see any problems with these being up. I may have to tap a few back down, but so far they look pretty good, guys. And this guitar has been a nightmare as I've said before. Now this is one side. Let's switch it around to the other. Which has got a lot of cutting to do. Anyhow, this guitar has been an absolute nightmare to do. <clears throat> first thing is, the first time I tried to uh, put new frets on this, I dry fitted them in uh, with a hammer and with a press and with a chuck. And what I ended up with was a nightmare. Uh, they popped back out again and took parts with them. Okie doke. They took the fretboard with them. <clears throat> and I see one that may be a problem and may have to address it. Son of a gun. It seems to have decided to pop up anyway. And when that happens, you get, let, you get left with less and less material to uh, hold these, place, these frets in place. Uh oh, that's a problem. That's going to have to be picked up with a magnet. So, uh, when that happened, there was not a lot I could do. Hang in there. Anyway, the temperature was not cooperating with me. It had dropped like 30 degrees or more. The uh, frets themselves had contracted and sprung out of the uh, fretboard pulling uh, fretboard with them so that's always fun so I had to go back in and fit them again that meant taking my uh, saws and cleaning out the any problem areas and try to fit them better so I got them in I had them fitted I glued them up I had supposedly on a forecast Several days of nice weather. Several days of weather like this. 70 degrees, nice and dry, no humidity. Well, the forecast totally screwed me. Uh, we ended up with like a 30%, uh, uh, sorry, a 30 degree drop in temperature, as well as uh, a total nightmare for humidity. It's raining hard. And I came out the next day. And sure as shit, I had sprung glued frets uh, in place on the guitars. Like, oh my god. 
So now what I get to do, I get to get my uh, wedge out and, and take these down to where they belong, right beside the uh, binding. And that is a bit of a job to make sure I don't do any scuffing on the body itself. You can see that. I have to grind it right over this. And what I'm going to do, guys, it's wood on wood, granted. But when you're doing this, you don't want to take any chances. Okay? You want to put carpenter's tape on there as a safety measure just to make sure that, that you have no issues uh, with scratching. All right? Well, there you go. The shoulders are protected as well as the sound hole because there are fines that come off with this that I don't, fall, I don't want falling into this guitar because it is an electric. It's acoustic electric and there are parts in there I don't want that uh, those fines to be attracted by their magnets. You follow me? Uh, if it's just acoustic, I wouldn't worry so much about it. I just kind of cover the hole up. I wouldn't worry that much about it. But since it is electric, I will be covering it up to make sure that uh, nothing nasty falls inside. Okie dokie. And that's just a good habit to get into anyway, even if it's just acoustic. You don't want that stuff everywhere because it's nasty and, you know, it's uh, not fun. So hang in there, guys, while I start the uh, shave job. <laughs> and this is why I use my little handy dandy tool. You can see it very readily. There it is. And it just takes it off right at 70. It, it takes it off and leaves me a 35 degree angle on the uh, end of the press, just like they do with a Plex machine. Except mine gets smoothed out afterwards. They don't leave a sharp edge to them because uh, I take a tiny little file and I finish that up with filing those. Okay, so but it's not necessary to touch this binding at all, so I can actually protect it. And yes, this is overkill. Anybody sees me? I hear just doing too much. But yes, it's just a way of protecting this guitar. And I'd rather feel comfortable about protecting it than not. You know. And it will not uh, interfere with the job I'm doing at all. Okie doke. And this little guitar has been through a lot lately. After it went through that nice little uh, weather pop up and spring up of the frets when it was glued. That was just, just unbelievably shitty thing to happen to this guitar. It's like, what's the worst thing that could happen? That was it. And like, how the hell is it possible? Well, weather changes in Texas, you know. I try to uh, adjust and plan for those things. You know, have at least 48 hours of nice uh, weather so that uh, we don't have any issues with that. This last little side here done. And if I see any mooring whatsoever on this, I'll stop and I'll actually tape each individual spot on this. But there shouldn't be any mooring. This, this tool I got in my hands relatively new. I've only had it about a year. So there should be no issues whatsoever with using it. And that's right. That's the way it's done. <laughs> Very noisy. Sorry guys for the noise. But what it does is knocks right down. Now... I'll probably end up taking this nut off here anyway to put on a different nut. Okay, I'm just thinking I'm going to remove this nut anyway. Uh, so why not go ahead and just remove it now so I can get to that tang much easier than uh, trying to stop at that spot. And this should be glued properly, I'm hoping. And it is. There's a couple of drops of glue in it and it comes right out. Of course, we'll save this for the owner. It won't be good anymore simply because it won't fit his guitar anymore, unfortunately. Because with new frets, it's going to be cut too low, right? Way too low. But now I can at least get in there and uh, get out that last tang on this guitar. And when I do that, I need to tape that up as well. Again, it's like wearing belt and suspenders, but I just feel more comfortable having it taped and protected than not. Okay, so you see it all wrapped up and safe again. All right, let's back it up and show you what I'm doing with my 
little tiny file. That's why I call my 35 degree file. And it's doing a pretty good job of it so far. It's really taking that stuff away. Especially there on the body. You don't want to press down, you want to press against the file, it's, uh, the uh, fret itself. Now, up here on higher on the guitar, that's no problem. But you don't want to press down on the guitar when it's over the body. And I'm just about there on some of these. And I'm pretty, still pretty sharp, guys. These are really cuts you good. <laughs> Especially back here. And oh, goody. I've had one pop up. Well, that's going to take uh, uh, some hammer and glue. I've had uh, one pop up. And that's just because of the uh, all the shit it's been through. Damn it to hell. Hang in there. Well, here we are at the other side of the guitar, and I've uh, just loosely set this up to be just below the tangs on this, so I can check that uh, binding on there, so I don't put any, you know, scratches on there. Of course, it won't scratch up. It's just like, you know, just being extra doubly safe. I got some of these are extra long on this thing too. <laughs> I need to address. Uh, I need to cut this one off a little bit more. <laughs> it's way too much to be trying to shave that one. There we got it. Okay. That was way too much over. Make sure I throw that away in the trash. I wanted to bite me there in my hand. Okay, so. And occasionally you want to stop and check your work. Make sure it's taken off at 35 degrees. And nothing's popping up on you. Wow. And so far I got that one that's come up even under glue and pressure. So I want to address that one. Unbelievable. <sighs> just because of the previous damage done to it, just have nothing to grab onto. And uh, it's over the body, so not much I could do about uh, you know vicing it in. I was going to use a C clamp and some erasers to vice it in, but I couldn't put enough pressure on it to do any good. You know, uh, it'd be too much on the back to try to pressure to put a hole through the back of the guitar. And that we don't want to have to fix that too. So we're going to finish up uh, doing these uh, rough ends on these frets, get them all level in 35 degrees, and. Uh, Go from there, so hang in there guys. We'll show you the next step of this work. Okay, so these are noise guys are working in the yard, but anyway, the next thing to do is come through and test any frets for high ones, right? Any rockers. And check them all three spots just to be sure. And I got a rocker, guys. Okay, so I gotta mark that with some tape or a blue pen on this. Darn it, on the fret itself, we're all mark it. Okay, this one right here, I got a high fret. So I'll mark that and now I'll have to address that by itself. Aha, got one here too. Alright, this one's high. That's the trouble one too. That's why I had to clamp down on it. I knew it would be trouble. Alright, that was fine. How far am I coming? Oops, I'm already out of camera. Okay, hold it, guys. I found two that are gonna be a problem. Alright. This one's high.
This one's high. Okay, so I've got a high one here as well. Right? Check this next one. Sorry, guys. Oh, I switch. Oh, I check them in three spots. And I got a high one here. Yeah, it's high all the way around. Okay, check this level. One. That one's high. That one's level. That one's level. That one's level. That's level. That's level, that's level. Ah, here's a real high one. Okay, that one's a problem. This one that popped up, I believe. That's low with the rest of them. Well, shit. There's one that's popped up. This one right here. It's a problem. Okay, so what I'm going to do, guys, there's so many on here that need to be dressed up. Alright? You'll look at all these that have been marked. And this was, well, this is high. Last one. Well, I end up doing is shaving these with a shaving block, right? Rip all the way down the line. And what I'll do is help level these up for me. Okay, so I have no more rockers in the bunch. Okay, I put sandpaper on this and I'll take it down the neck and I'll shave it exactly like it's supposed to be. I'll be touching 12 because the gap that's involved here, the length of it helps. You know, make them all 12s. In the same height, the only high ones in the group. And I'll come back, you'll see some of the blues removed, some are still there, some all be gone, but it'll dress all the high frets I've got. And then I'll come back with, you know, my uh, crowning tool and I'll finish that off with crowning every one of them again. And that's why a refret is so long to do and so expensive to do. It takes so much to do this right, okay? Well, I checked with my radius tool and it's a 12. Okay, you see this 12 on the little handle up there at the top, up here. <laughs> it's a 12. So I'll take sandpaper on my 12, right? and knock these frets down, so hang in there. Well, one thing you wanna make sure to do before you start grinding away at these frets, you wanna make sure your fretboard's level. And uh, one other thing I did before we started working on this guitar, months ago, I loosened up the fret, uh, the truss rod on this guitar. I loosened up the truss rod on this guitar because it didn't have any strings on it. And you don't wanna have a guitar with no strings on it uh, sitting around for very long so forward bend on you and this looks pretty well straight and it's got a little bit of a bend to it but not much so I'm going to wait a little bit uh, I took a little more pressure off the fret the uh, I took a little more pressure off the truss rod and it uh, should be fine by the time I start to work on this but what I want to do guys is take this block with this grit paper right it's a 12 uh, radius, and I'm going to go up and down this, and I'm going to flatten out these frets, get them all level once again, uh, especially these high ones, and then go back on it with the, uh, uh, with the file, the rounding file, the crowning files, and crown it back up again to where it looks really nice and sharp. And then I'll take out the uh, individual hand file, that little tiny one you see me working with, and knock all these down, these edges down as well as these little sharp spots and get those set up and then I'll address these two I found out that I've had two that popped up on me uh, how it happened it just because the previous stuff that went on with this guitar I mean, it pop out twice um, once on the dry fit and once on the glue up and then had to remove them well this kind of crud type thing happens and unfortunately it's over the body so I can't do any you know vice work on the darn thing and uh well i can but it's going to be kind of dangerous I, I may have to just really think through this before i do it and just put just enough pressure on this to keep it in place once i give it some taps with the hammer so hang in there while i set this up to do the uh run through and it only takes like eight nine ten swats with this to get these all flat and even again okay here we go we're going to level these flat and start back over again
You can see the ones that are highest are coming off the most, that blue. And we're gonna check them to make sure they don't rock anymore. And that rocking should be all over. And you can see it didn't take much off of them, just kind of just, you know. Now we have the, uh, all the frets leveled, right? So some glue left on that one, I had to press down the vise. Now we got them all leveled, it's time to crown them up, okay? And yeah, this is again kind of overkill, but I like doing this, protect the uh, fretboard. You know, and this is, is an old guitar, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, mask up the uh, frets themselves, keep that fretboard, you know, any issues with it. Okay, as you see, everything's taped up now. A lot of people don't go this much trouble, uh, but they got, uh, I guess, a, a better hand than I have at this. What I'm going to do, you've seen it a dozen times on my videos, go through here and recrown all these, and that will level them up and final them up. And then we start working on the fretboard itself, getting those cleaned up, and those uh those uh pits that came out with the uh fret pulling and springing get those set up and fixed show you how that's done okie dokie so let's just go over a few of these with you and show what we're doing all right now this one i believe just has its edges to be recrowned yeah just the edge Knock down a few little spots, little triangles I keep talking about. They're left. And that was done. Okay, so that one's recrowned and level with the rest of them. Well, here we are. We're about finished with this. We've only got a few frets to go. And the last fret I started working on is like, there's nothing coming off this. <laughs> it's not doing any shaving. And I looked at my file and it was going bare. I could not believe it. These uh, darn little stainless steel frets are eating up my regular files. So I switched to a new uh, file, new file blade. Uh, same width, medium width. I'm going to go back here on these three I missed that the file just could put it on me. And hopefully it's going to last long enough to get down to the end of this thing. I, I couldn't believe it, but the stainless steel frets are eating up my files. And I don't have a diamond fret uh, file left. Uh, not a, a, a crowning file. And uh, the one I have is a flat bear as well. Both sides. Like, damn it. So, I'm probably going to bite the bullet and buy a new one. Uh... If I get through this, of course I'll buy some replacements for these as well, but if I get through this, uh, so much the better. But uh, it's really eating up my files. So let's see if we get through it. Hang in there. So I'm going through and I'm cleaning this up a lot. I've gone back over the blue spots still left. Uh, I think I hit most of them that uh, I didn't get a good job done on. I got real close to them with magnifying glass saw, hey, <laughs> I uh, still got some flat spots on here that this other file missed. It just wore out on me. I can't believe it. But the new file is working like a champ. Uh, I think I'll get through this without having to order a new one. And uh, still have a lot of this uh, sharpness to go over and round those off to make sure they're not sharp on the edges. Some glue to remove and some fretboard to repair. So hang in there. <laughs> 